This talk is uh, titled "3D Printing." Um, basically, um, I want to talk about some stuff like I want to break down everything, like how did I get involved, how did it start, um, some basic projects we went over, um, like the intermediate process that basically you have to go to first, like understanding like the the 3D modeling software and everything needed to like print like the objects and stuff. So um, first, what I'll do is. Um, I'll basically like give a brief history of the MakerBot. The MakerBot was. Can everybody see like this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it was called the MakerBot Replicator 2, and this was um, the thing we used uh, to print out uh, 3D models. Um, basically, like some history of it. Um, it was, yes, yeah, right. Founded in um, 2009 in um, Brooklyn, New York, and <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I, I don't know. So, I mean, so they say like mathematicians like they it really like give credit to people. So you know, I wanted to give credit to everybody you know who made like this possible. So like uh, see me other people yeah, involved so. um, <laughs> <laughs> because Adam Mayer and Zach and that's really all. Uh, now you're getting illegible, fraud. Huh? Your writing's getting illegible now. Hey. And I noticed we haven't mentioned anything. I see. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> there go. Um, right now, I'm about to transition you to, like, basically, um, where do you go to, like, print images? Um, it's a, it's a program called MakeAware, which is compatible with the MakerBot, and some of the modeling software we use. Okay. Some of the modeling software we use, so 3D. Okay, some of the mod okay, I'm pretty sure almost everybody is familiar with Mathematica. And I was also asked to advertise that this is actually free for the math majors. I mean, I thought it was supposed to be a year, but apparently I just got an email that, I mean, I was supposed to, I got it in August, but apparently it's going to be over like in October. So I don't know how long, you know. Using it's it. renewable it's as long as you're a student. It's renewable? Yeah. Okay. I guess that answers that question. Um, yeah. So Mathematica, we had uh, Mesh Lab. Um, another thing we had, we used was Blender, um, MakeAware, and one of the last things was OpenSCAD. So yeah, so everyone is really familiar with Mathematica, and um, another another program was MeshLab. This was basically used to fix up like images, like fix up meshes that you know weren't exactly like smooth. Um, Blender was also used for the same thing. MakeAware already showed this was a program that was compatible that allowed like the stuff to be read and stuff to be printed out. And OpenSCAD was actually where I want to start when we first started printing out our first projects. Like our first project was basically just to like print some stuff and try to see what we can do. So with OpenSCAD though, like, so now you have 3D modeling software, but now you need to get familiar with syntax. So like some, some basic, but the syntax for, the syntax for OpenSCAD is, is really simple. Like if you wanted to make something like a sphere, right, you actually just put the sphere and you have your radius in here, whatever you want it to be, and you just end it. If you wanted to make something like um, a cylinder, well, you just put cylinder, and you know you put your height, um, and you put your radius, and you're done. And these were actually just—it actually took us a while to like get these down because I don't like it seems it seems really easy now, but when you first get used to the program, it takes a while. And these are these are two of the these are, these are the prints I'm going to actually show you right now. Before you mentioned the radius, can you also pick where the center of the sphere is? Yes, so so which what you want to do is if you want it to if you want it to do something. You can also write this out. Okay, so so like so like um when you originally like put the image down, it would automatically place one of the corners like in the first quadrant. So like you don't want that to happen, you just say, you know, center equals equals false. And it will automatically position it at the origin. So it'll put the center right at the origin. But the orientation really doesn't matter because it's like when you upload the when you upload it to MakerWare, however you had the position of it, I mean you can already change it and it'll already make like a default position. So no matter where you put it, so it really doesn't matter. Okay. 
That's just like your beginning. And then, okay, so I'll explain like what's going on if I should speed it up. So basically what happens is, um, Okay, so basically what happens is this part right here, like this red piece, it's like um behind behind the machine, it's it's like um a jacket for 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 the filament that's gonna be uploaded into the machine. So and then before before this process actually starts, what happens is it heats up to like 230 degrees, well exactly 230 degrees, sometimes it goes like plus or minus one, but that really doesn't matter. And um, it melts the filament and then it starts making it starts making the image. And then I noticed uh, a lot of people would ask me, they like, you know, how like they really thought I was doing like big stuff because they thought I was actually like making the algorithm to actually, you know, for the for the printed map to make the image. But what I, what what actually is going on is when you make when you when you want to make something, you export it as an STL file. And STL file stands for you know it's, it's stereo lithography. And I think it was um, invented by Charles Charles Hall in like 1984. And it's basically used, it basically converts the image that you want into a readable file for a 3D printer. Uh, Do the objects you print have to support themselves? Okay, so okay, that's that's a good question. There's there there's an option in um, MakerWare that allows you to say supports and wraps. But something like a sphere, what it does, so it's not gonna so it's not gonna make the bottom completely round. You get what I'm saying? Because it's building it in layers. So it's gonna have some kind of support for itself. But in other models, which I'll which I'll like show you, yes, you'll have to you'll have to provide support for them. But that's as easy as clicking supports and wraps. But one thing you do have to do is when you're done, um, they make the they make like the filament that they use to, to support it. It's like so thin that when you're done, you actually just break it off. And when you break it off, you get the image that you wanted. It's almost done. Almost there. How long would this be in real time? Um, you can see it in the lower right. Yeah, um, 30 minutes. So I mean, it was sitting there because what I did was I let it. I mean, I, I put my laptop up on like some books, recorded a video, and went to class. Yeah, we <laughs> <laughs> so your class is only 30 minutes long? Huh? So your class is only 30 minutes long? No, I, you know, I took a bathroom break. <laughs> <laughs> How big is that sphere? Um, it's right here, actually. I was going to turn the light to show you. This is the sphere. It's tiny, though. It's tiny. It's nice. And this was the bottom I was showing you. Like, it's not exactly brown, so like it supports itself. Okay. So something a little more, I mean, this is not as complicated as it looks. It's, it's actually like really easy. It probably takes like five minutes to do. And what you need to do, like, so if you want to make something like a cup. So basically this, this CAD program allows you like to use, you know, geometric fittings to make certain things. But I mean, it's kind of limited though. Because mathematically you're able to make functions, you know, get really cool stuff. The stuff that prints out here, it's, it's good for beginners. You go, ooh, ah, but you know, if you want to get into the real stuff, you don't really want to use this program. So what you basically do with something like this is um, you just have you just have a cylinder, right? And that cylinder is gonna it's gonna represent this little portion down there, right? And what you can actually do is, you know, you have you have one cylinder, set a radius for it, you add you add another cylinder, or make make, make it even easier. Um, to get to get this piece like that. What you can do is you can take a cylinder and have it for two different radii. So, so, so you can set one radius equal to something, right? And then set radius two equal to something else, and then just give it a height. And that'll actually give you this piece right here. So it's actually a piece of a cone now. It's not a exactly, cylinder anymore. Exactly, exactly. It becomes a cone. Good observation. Uh, so, <laughs> so, and then, so, so then now you have, you, have, you have this image, and then you just make, you just make another cylinder. You just you wrap it around here, right? And um, you can use a function called like union. It does exactly what you think it does. It unions the two pieces. Or you can just sit it on it and have a little overlap, as you see right here. And then copy and paste the code, make, make the radius a little bit smaller, and use this function called difference, pop it right out, and you make it hollow.
because you want to be able to cool. put something in it, right? <laughs> so you're making it solid at first and subtracting another solid. Exactly, exactly. And that's what this different function does. Like, that's, that's the reason why this is like such like an optimal program for beginners. I mean, something like you want to you want to make something hollow difference. Just take the difference. Could you use AutoCAD? Um, yeah, you could use AutoCAD. So it's, it's, it's like another version of a CAD program. Um, and then I'll show. It's open source and it's just it's like for programmers. Okay, here we go. And this is and we started to make. So yeah, so the same process. Um, so, so before this process, which I'll show you right after, um, what you do is um, you export it as an STL file. There's, there's options in OpenSCAD, and you just click export as STL file. You name the file, you, you upload it, and you just click make, and it'll start making the image. So any questions about that? Is that the cup that you had modeled in yes. OpenSCAD? Yes, yes, this is the cup. And that's it right there. Again, the video is a lot longer because again, I was in class. <laughs> this is this is the cup. It's a lot smaller. Than the <laughs> it's like a shot glass. I, 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 I made it a lot smaller because the original one looked exactly like a shot glass. <laughs> I was going to say you're not being very generous with your drinks. <laughs> Itself and the bundles cost forty dollars each, and then you know uh, the printer itself is almost like three thousand dollars, which is actually, I mean, I mean, it's pretty affordable for some of the professors. In here. <laughs> <laughs> so, how much of a, I mean, how much can one bundle do? Um, oh, that's that's really the question. They can actually do a lot, but we actually we we haven't. So as far as testing it, so we've printed probably a hundred hours on one bundle, I would say, and I mean like huge prints, big prints. We think big. It's a there. it's a kilogram. A bun it's fifty dollars a kilogram, forty to fifty dollars a kilogram. But those things are pretty light because they're filled with fluff. They're they're I don't know the term I'm trying to think. They're not they're not solid. It has like a honeycomb structure. Yeah. Inside. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. I was into that. <coughs> okay. So okay. So the really the really big. The really big thing that we got into. So, you know, after we after we finished playing around or whatever, we went to we went to Mathematica, and this is, okay, and this is where it all started. So, we were very discouraged when we got our first project. I'll admit, um, we didn't know too much about Mathematica. We didn't really know like what was going on, what exactly we were doing. So we tried to you know escape and get around it. And I advised the court wind of it and actually brought us back to what he wanted to do. So, but um, we basically wanted to, we basically wanted to get a knot printed out. But I thought behind doing it was it, it was, it was not right. So some of the things um, we can, we, we, we can start with, we did, we did, we did sub projects. And one of the sub projects was actually make a torus, right? So within the Taurus, though, so what you actually have, I don't want to bring this down, but um, so within the Taurus, you just have a circle, right? And what you want to do is you want to take another circle and revolve it right around. And this image here, you'll get a Taurus. Some people, you know, quick, simple drawing is something like that, right? Um, so for you yeah, have a thing about this. Um, let's see. Go for it. Sorry, I like the logo. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Rob, if you want, you can use the right one. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 That's that's actually a good idea. Thank you. So I'm gonna keep some of these things. Basically, export any 3D object you created as STL. 
Yeah, but what you have to do is, okay, obviously it's possible, man, because this thing is being thrown in the load. I don't think it actually Okay, so say I wanted to so say I wanted to export something like that. A simple a simple circle. No, it wouldn't be able to do it. Mainly because I mean this is just like this is just a curve in space. So it can't do something like this. So what you want to do, which I was trying to okay, there it is like there. So it begs the question, so so this is actually the notebook created for actually making the tours. So what you basically do, so the idea of having a circle, and then let this little video play, and you take the circle and you revolve it around this whole frame tri circle. But you need to know, so what this image isn't doing, oh, just pause it. What this image isn't doing is not creating, you know, the path that is going along, right? So what you want to do, and which you know, I'll give credit to Dr. Schiffer and Dr. Azov for helping me doing, is what you want to do, you want to take a vector, um, you, you want to take the tangent vector, right, to the circle at some point. You want to do this at every point. And then you take a vector perpendicular to it, right? And on that vector, you want to make, you want to make a circle, right? And then you translate it. You translate it to your circle. And you, when you do this at every point, you'll actually get what you want it, right? And a better, better illustration of it. Um, does anyone have any questions about that? So when you say translate the vector coming from the circle, what do you mean by that? So, okay, so originally, so what, what you would have is just a circle, I guess. Okay, so you just have something like this. So when I took the derivative, and, um, and then I took another vector which was perpendicular, and then I made that circle, which was given here. This is this is just this is just a circle at one point on you know the big circle that you're talking about, right? So you get something like this that's just centered at the origin. So that's right? like it's, a cross section of the torus, exactly. but centered at the origin, exactly. not centered where you want it. Exactly. So it's not centered what you it's not centered where you want it to be. So when you translate it, you just actually you know you know you just add you know the original parameterization that you started with, you know, and it'll go where you want it. Brackets now. Well, no, I wanted to just show, so this is, let's see, um, that's, that's pretty amazing. That's nice. And so you do, so you repeat the same process. You have this, and what you do is you just do export. Um, let's see if I still remember how to do this. Um, you, you parenthesize it, um, call it whatever you want, um, Taurus. You name the file, .stl, finish the quote, that's a little percent symbol, and bam, that's all you have to do. So when you export it as an STL file, it'll, 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 it'll export, you go to Makeaware, you upload the file, and then you can just print it out, right? So another thing I wanted to, so now I'm, I say we did some sub-projects. So another project was, so after we did, after we finished the tours, which actually took almost half the summer to do, um, bam, that's done. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. This took a really long time to do. Um, so and then next, what we wanted to do, um, as we see how cool this was to print out, we said, you know, we want to look at a trefoil, right? And for those who aren't too familiar, it's just regular two, three, nine. We can actually pass it around. But the cool thing about this, this actually, you know, this tour took the whole summer, this took five minutes. So what you actually have to do is, I mean, so you just drop the parameterization for the trefoil up where you have, you know, X of T, which is the original um, parameterization that you want to start with, 
And then, I mean, the same, the same logic is held throughout. And it'll actually make the truck foil. Um, okay, so that project is done. Bam. Correct. So now what we wanted to do, we wanted to talk about torus knots, right? Torus knots are, I mean, I'll give a, a really, a really watered down definition. It's, it's, it's a knot lying on the surface of a torus, right? And when I first heard about that, it really didn't mean, it, 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 it didn't mean too much to me, but after I finished like looking around at it a little bit, actually, you know, I understood it a bit more. Um, let's see, here. So the image that you're passing around is this red image right here. It's the torus, I mean, it's the, it's, it's the trefoil, and here, is the torus. So it's lying on him. So we didn't get a chance to print, you know, like um, the torus out and then, you know, try to, you know, put the trefoil on it and bold it and print it out. But I mean, if it lives on it, it actually did print it out. You should, you should do that. You should do that. The torus with the trefoil just sort of bulging out yeah. of it. Right. No. Next project. Um, okay. So I guess. Uh, so, oh, okay, okay, yeah, good, good question. That was actually something I was going to start to answer. So, when when you're printing out something, what you have to do, so so it only prints out in that one color. So, if you start with red, it's going to print out red. You can't stop the print, change the color, and continue. So, so like um, when I'm printing out, you know, a Taurus or whatever, whatever color, I, whatever color I start with, that's the color, you know, it's going to have to be, you know, continued out through the whole image. And you can't pause the image and once it starts, and if it stops for some strange reason, you have to start over again. So for like images that you know took 20 hours, and you know they stop, it's another 20 hours. That's just, that's just how it goes. Um, okay, so now. You know, which seems like ten minutes, like a ten minute journey, is actually, you know, like two 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 and two and a half months. So now we actually get to the knot that we actually had had originally wanted to talk about. So this the time that, that took a, a long time was like sort of figuring out how to turn the circle into a torus? Well, so it took a it took a long time for me, um, because mainly I didn't have I didn't have the background required for it. So, so like, um, making surfaces for you know curves that was not something I was all too familiar with. So this is why you know it took a long time, and then also getting used to the syntax. Did that? Is is that also sort of what we had to do with the the trefoil? I mean, because like the circle is like a one dimensional thing. Did we yeah. also have to take the trefoil and exactly, exactly, exactly. The Found that up. The knowledge held throughout. So like with the trefoil, we did the same thing. We made we made we made a circle on. Um, Within you know within the big parameterization, so. But that program you have, you can plug in any parametric curve, and it will draw any the two for curve, you. Assuming that you know it's closed. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so the idea, the idea um, of this new knot that we wanted to start with was we started with the polynomial p of u v, um, the u v, the complex thing, um, and we we define. Um, P of U of V is equal to U squared minus V cubed. So, I mean, people are familiar with complex numbers. Um, this is just things that are in the form of X plus I, Y, with X and Y and R, and then I satisfying that I squared is equal to negative one. Cool. Um, so now we see that P is a function which goes from C2 to C. And is, are you planning to print out the surface that's defined yeah. by this? Yeah. So, 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 so basically, so basically, now we have a lot of confidence. So now we just, you know, you, you know, we're trying to explore. We're trying to see things that, you know, cool, cool things that we can print, right? So, we won't talk about this too much, but we basically, we basically have a function defined. Okay. 
Numerators are 2x, 2y, 2z, and... Yes. There's okay, so in there. all these dots stand for x squared plus y squared plus z squared. This is, yeah, squared. Right? Cool? So what is the last term? This term right here. So the, all these dots, dots equal that. Right, I, can, I don't know what... It's minus oh, 1 plus oh, dot, dot, is, dot over 1 okay, plus okay. dot. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Okay, so... Okay, so yeah. So now, I mean, so basically, okay, so now we take, so this was just, So something's a little confusing, right? <clears throat> mm -hmm. That's a function of three real numbers. It's producing a complex number. Two, two complex numbers. Yeah. Producing two complex numbers. Mm -hmm. How does it relate to P? He just, does, he just wrote down Q equals P composed with G. Ah, okay. Wow. Is that? Yeah. Is that a question? Is that cool? I'm getting a strange look. Keep going. Okay. He can still get strange looks. Okay. So, okay. So, yeah. So, I guess we need to go over here. But, um, okay. So, now if you talk about the composition of the function P of G, Right? It basically, it's a function that goes from R3 to C. So does that make sense? These are these are three variables. Does this, is it, is, is this only make sense? Like how P is defined? Okay. So, okay, so now, so now we want to look at, we want to look at um, the inverse images. Right? So, so the easy example, and this is all, this will all this, this, this will all lead up to um, this, this notion of stereographic projection, which is basically, I guess that's what I had this big thing over here for, um, which, which basically what it, what, it, what it talks about is translating points on a sphere to the plane. And that's as simple as I can like, make it. So, like, so like say you wanted to look at you know, um, the inverse image of just a point in um, the origin of the x y plane, right? So 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 it's in it's in R two, right? So you want to say you know what does this map to when when you go to R three, right? Well, yeah. So so what does this point look like? This point would just be the z axis. Does that make sense? What what's the map that you're trying to invert here? Well, no no no. So that's what I'm saying. So I'm just giving like a basic example of when you're looking at inverse images. You're just trying to see, you know, if I'm if I'm talking about this function p, which maps from R3 to the complex, I'm trying to figure out what are what are the things, what are, what are, what are the things um, in R3 how how is defined that map to zero. That's basically what the inverse image is asking, right? And after and then after we did this, we basically we we're basically seeing that it was actually um, a trefoil, right? So what you do is, so if a point maps to um, the z-axis in R3, say you wanted to consider a point with just, you know, a neighborhood around it, right? So this would actually just map to, if you're talking about, if you're in R3, it would just map to, you know, a tube, right? Does that make sense? You're talking about you're talking about two different functions. You're talking about there. You're talking about projections, projecting straight down. Yeah. In R three to R two. Mm -hmm. You're comparing that to this other function, which is hard for us to visualize. Okay. Which so is Q. But don't worry. About, I mean, the, the, what you're what you're doing is trying to say that if you think of R three mapping to R two. Yeah. In the normal, just straight down map. Yeah. This is what inverse images of points and disks look like. Yeah. And now you're going to do the same. Similarly, what, what happens with this weird function? Q, yeah, right? and yeah, that's similar with what, what happens with this weird function. So, so this would be the thing that was actually. So, we look at the inverse, you know, of Q, like the things that map to zero. This would actually would gave us, you know, this weird this weird surface about the trefoil. You could like, and you could pass that around, right? So, I mean, the basis behind this. Um, which I mentioned was uh, the stereographic projection. So it basically just talks about, so like say, um, I'm pretty sure everybody's seen a map. I mean, 
No. You haven't seen a map? I have, but most <laughs> people haven't. <laughs> oh, I've seen a... I'm pretty sure most people have no. seen what a map looks like. Okay. Oh, a map. Yeah, no, like like a map, like of, um, map you know, the, the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I think, like, yeah. You mean the globe, right? Right, right. No, a map? No, he doesn't mean a globe. He means a flat something in a globe. Yeah, like, yeah, like, like literally a map. Well, like, 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 like not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when we look, open the dictionary and find maps. map. <laughs> so, so, like, so, like, with the stereograph projection, it's basically, I mean, yeah, the Earth, you know, if we were assuming it, you know, to be, you know, almost like a sphere or whatever, I mean, how is it that, you know, you're able to project it, you know, like put everything on something that's, you know, um, in the plane, right? These are clearly, these are clearly in two different dimensions. Will we not agree? Yeah, we do. Okay. So, I guess the more, the more concrete example of this was to say we wanted to... Um, so you mean like a terrain map, right? Like if you... Where you can no. see mountains and valleys. And no, so I'm just talking about like any so so like a regular map that you get other from you know with Africa. I mean I mean anything anything on it. I mean you basically you basically like the, the logic behind you were able to take something you know, you know that's in yeah that's in a sphere and map it to a plane. You know these are clearly two different dimensions, right? So so the basic idea of you know how this can be done is just take. The circle x squared plus y squared equals one, right? And this is just the circle, the unit circle, centered at the origin, right? And what we can do is we can label. So let's call this the north pole, and let's call this the south pole. And this will give us some intuition of why, when we have this trefoil, it doesn't look like the original one. It's blown up a bit on some of the sides, and this will give you a reason why. So. Calling this point uh, zero one. Now, say we wanted to take a point on here, right on the circle, label it x y, right, and we wanted to. So what we're trying to do? We're trying to take a point on the sphere and map it down to the x-axis. That's basically the idea of you know the world being mapped onto a plane, right? So calling this point well here, we just have. X comma zero, right? Well, we can call it. Let's call it some distance. T. So we want to we want to we want to say we can construct a line which goes through where well, it starts at the North Pole and goes through these two points, right? So how can we do this? So we can just use similar triangles, right? So what we can do is uh, we can just do y minus one of x minus zero. So this would be um, this looks the same, right? Yes. And we want to compare it to the big thing, which is just 0 minus 1 all over um, t minus 0. Right? Solve for t. Exactly, and solve for t. So t is equal to negative x over y minus 1. Right? Just cross multiplying. And t is equal to x over 1 minus y. And we've done it. And we're there. So we can take any point on this sphere and map it on to the point. Right? So so with all these, and I'm gonna I'm gonna like you can, you can pass around these a little more after. But with all these, it's it's the big question is, you know, um, can we print can we print anything? So that's 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 really so it's like you know, we printed all this cool stuff, we've done all you know, you know, you know, what seems to be magic. And we're able to still print, you know, really weird surfaces. It seems like we're almost able to print anything. But we can't. We can't print anything. Um, this is basically answered by, by say this, right? Oh, spell it right, too. Um, I think it's the this. Rubini's theorem, right? Which basically says that any three-dimensional object, we can always we can always divide it up into two-dimensional layers. I'm getting a weird look. Even you can just slice Thank it into yeah. pieces. Yeah, yeah. So any three-dimensional object, you can slice it into two D pieces. So I mean, so so this is a big thing for us because you know how how the printer prints, it prints in layers, right? It's taking slices of this three D object, right? So. So, but, 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 okay, so this tells us that, you know, 
you would think this tells us, you know, that we can print, you know, everything. So every three-dimensional object, you know, we can print, right? But it doesn't, right? Because, you know, mathematicians, you know, we tend to think of, you know, things that, you know, are unrealistic, right? <laughs> right? I, I, I mean, we, we do. So, so, so basically, um, how this is answered is just that, you know, you can only, you can only print, you know, with, with the limitations of the tools that you have, right? And, yeah, that's pretty much all I want to say. Do you have an example of something unprintable? Yes. Um, I don't. I can think of something else. <laughs> so yeah, so uh, okay, yeah. So so this pretty much so that pretty much wraps up like most of what I wanted to talk about. So we basically went over you know um, the process of you know how the prints are done, um, the the familiarity that you have to have with the modeling software, um, how the printer works. Um, and then the big question, you know, can we can we print anything? And we can. And that's why I went into that. Are, are you saying that you you can't print anything just because of the mechanical? Yeah, the mechanical limitations. Yes, 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 yes. But assuming, I mean, you know, you figure how fast you know this stuff is moving. You know, maybe one day we'll actually be able to print you know these unrealistic things. But as of now, we can't print anything. Do, do, do you want to tell them what the actual STL file looks like? Oh, so, um, I guess, okay. So, say, so say, this is just give you some information on how it looks like. So, so if you have, if you have an image, um, say something like a cube. This is not the best example. Right? With the STL file. Yeah, that's terrible. But with the, <laughs> what the STL file will do, so it'll actually, it'll actually give you, it'll actually give you the normal first, and then it'll give you these vertices. It'll give you all these vertices. And that's pretty much it. I mean, if you want to see. So if you had a smooth surface, would it approximate it with lots of little flat tiles joined together? You mean like um? I mean, take the example. If you saw like the example of like a sphere. Sure. Right. right. Sphere. Yeah. 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 So what it does? So 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 that was the reason why we didn't have to make supports for the object, because I mean, it didn't exactly make this part you know exactly round when we were starting off the sphere, right? At the bottom. Yeah. At the bottom, it didn't exactly make it round. It started building it in layers, right? So does that does that answer? So do you do you have the do you have the sphere in the STL five on your computer? Um, I'm going to ask you to do something to me. Like, if you have the, are you looking at your, you're dealing with your computer right there? Yeah. Um, yes, yeah. so I can bring it. You and then can you open it in Nash Lab? Do you have Nash Lab on your computer? Yes. <laughs> so that's going sort to of answer your question, what the sphere, you show them what the sphere looks like in Nash Lab. Okay. Um, If you were to look at that sphere file in MeshLab, MeshLab shows you like a mesh. It means like a wire mesh. Everything is represented as a wire mesh. So if anybody That's wants what to see Mathematica the file. Is doing too. Okay. Could you import that file in there right now? Um, yeah, so what I, what I can do is, so the process is, so, so this is the sphere we have. Oh, yeah, the mesh shows you right there. Right? It shows you the, the mesh as well. Yeah, we can export as STL. Well, first of all. Actually, let's see. You've done. You've got what I wanted to show. I forgot to show you like that. Yeah. Um, call it whatever. Um, I need to say print it. That's my mind. Um, go to Makeaware. Um, you can add the image. There you go. See, see, like, see, so, so when you're when you're in Mathematica, you know, you get you get something a lot smoother 
then then this. So this is why I was saying this is not really good for printing you know, if you want to print smooth surfaces. So that would actually print out that sort of yeah, 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 it'll be kind of, you know, like bulk and stuff. So, like, so within mathematics, what you can do is you can just add, you can just add it to plot more points. And when you plot more points, you know, you get a smoother surface. Can, can you go to, um, what's the biggest thing Um, I guess within these two images, these are probably, these are probably the biggest images that we've printed. This image actually has which has record time of about thirty six hours to print. Whoa! Yeah, yeah. yeah. What are they? What class was that? Um, you can, um <laughs> yeah, I was. Yeah, I was. <laughs> 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 Okay, dude. Okay. So, like that. Question. so what class did you do that, do that during? <laughs> no, I actually didn't do this. Um, I would like that uh, Dr. Audie to come up and talk a second about um, the three images in which you printed out. Okay, sure. Because yeah. I know nothing about them. Okay, I'm an assistant um, professor at the School of Pharmacy. And uh, I was interested in a 3D printer because I wanted to be able to print some of the molecules that I work with. And this vector one is a drug transporter that's found in a lot of your membranes. It's involved in cancer resistance. It's also involved with transporting drugs across the blood-brain barrier. It's called the multiple drug-resistant transporter. And I was, wanted to see if I could print it on their printer, and it took about 18 hours to print this thing. But I wanted to, you know, do some typical thing, and you can pass this around. Is it? Is this not? Is this not the? What's the really huge one? This is this one. I wanted to see how far we could go okay. with the 3D printer. But you know, classic thing to print. You know, you think for a, a molecule would be a DNA. So I had a DNA molecule printed. So this is DNA. <coughs> and, and, and is it standard to find STL files for these things? Oh, I have to use a program called. Uh, well, I use a book on the internet. It's going to say, okay, I want to be able to 3D printer molecules. And there's software, free software from the University of California, San Francisco, called uh, Chimera. And you convert it to an SDL file there. And you have a whole database of proteins and stuff that you can like, print out. And I wanted to pick something that was the most complicated thing I could think of to print. So this is called a uh, nucleosome. It's found in your chromosomes. And there's three strands of DNA. I mean, it's wound around by DNA a couple times. And there's uh, several subunits in it. And so you can see its structure is very intricate. It took 36 hours to print this, but most time was spent because all the supports in there, trying to get those supports out from the inside of here. So I'd use a Dremel, and you guys can look at this. It's fragile. It's, pretty, it's a lot more, it's the most yeah. fragile one, but I mean. Yeah. Yeah. So that's found in and, your, and, and, all your bodies right there. And, and well, actually, all those molecules are. From, from, from. Dr. Robert Jenner's grant, he bought the math department some super glue. <laughs> and, and I'm trying to get some filament, but yeah. we have to go through the whole bureaucracy of super glue. It has to be a UGA martyr, otherwise they won't buy it. So right. we're, trying, we're working on that. Super glue is appreciated, though. Yeah, yeah I have, well, have any more questions? <laughs> yeah, can you talk a little bit about is there different materials that you can print with or the strength? Oh, okay, of so okay, so the material that you use is um called PLA filament. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's um polyacidic um filament. Um and that's pretty much yeah, that's the that's pretty much um the filament that we were using. But there's also I've heard people talk about um within, you know, the one extruder that we have for the printer, um, there's actually one which has a double extruder, so it has, you know, two things that melt the plastic. And these stands that we're talking about that you know, take forever to break off, what you can do is you know, it has two different type of filaments. I'm not sure what the other one was because we we're only using the replicator too. And to which you know, when you make the image and it has the stand, it's water sol like, like soluble. So you can just drop it in water and pull it out. You don't have to worry about you know, wrecking your image. Okay. Is it my other you, you can also do wood, polymerized wood. Oh. And you can also do that. So when you and I were talking earlier about uh, your green trap wall knot and why it's sort of bulgy mm -hmm. on one end, you sort of mentioned stereographic projection, but I'm a little bit confused why stereographic projection contributes to that since the map goes from R3 to R2. So yeah, so, yeah, so, so why did it contribute to your three-dimensional trap wall so, knot? So you know, within, within uh, when I was doing the image of just the regular circle projection onto the yeah. plane, you've seen as you know, you were getting closer and closer to the North Pole, sure. these images were actually, well, well the points were actually, you know, getting like really, you know, far out. 
Is that? Yeah, so were you projecting some like a four dimensional sphere then? Yeah, yeah, okay. R4, yeah. So we were at C2. So C2 is just, which is the same thing as R4. Yeah. Um, what were the light bulbs? Oh, so what what I originally planned, um, <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't setting up nicely. Um, okay, I just wanted to make sure you weren't forgetting. No, 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 no. I, had so that, nice I got so, that from Malcolm Adams. And some some student built that for Dr. Adams in a um, geometry class. In a geometry class, I don't know how long ago he gave that to me covered in chalk. Twenty years ago, yeah. 20, okay. Yeah, it's it supposed to demonstrate stereographic. It took a pretty good while to like dust off the chalk, but it wasn't. This <laughs> it's still chalk on it, but it wasn't. It wasn't. Um, I couldn't like. I couldn't like get it to where so everyone can see it. So if anybody wants to see it after, so what it does is. You know, it's just it's just a light bulb which symbolizes you know our sphere, and this bottom portion which symbolizes our um, our plane. And what we do is, you know, we just take you know um, a washable marker and just draw an image on there and see where it maps to on the plane. Yeah, let me just comment since you brought up maps. Yeah. That they don't use stereographic projection to do maps because they distort distances really badly. They keep angles the same, but distances are distorted terribly. So they they usually use Mercator projection. Okay. which is much better if you actually want a useful map. Okay. So take differential geometry if you want to find out about it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that function G that is, I to answer your, the function G that Farad wrote down, he did P of G of something, right? That function G was the inverse of right. stereographic projection right. from R3 back into uh, S, into R4, which is C2. That's what yeah. is going on. Does you mind have any more questions about your screen? I have to. Yeah, that pretty much uh, wraps it up. So, thank you.